Hey guys, in this video, let's uh, try to animate a simple box just for fun. Let's see if we can get a box jump here in Maya. So something really basic and simple as far as the animation goes. So I'm going to click on my box here in my poly modeling tab. My interactive uh, creation tool is on, so I have to hold down the shift key and then drag the box onto the grid. That's under create polygon primitives. And on the bottom here, I have my interactive creation checked. If yours is not checked, when you click on any one of these uh, objects, yours will just simply appear. So scale it uh, to whatever you want it to be. And in this tutorial, let's just get this box to jump up and down as our basic animation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my uh, speed at 24, 24 frames per second. And I'm going to cha change my uh, timeline here from 200 and let's set it to 48 maybe 200 is a little too much so 200 uh, I mean 48 at 24 frames per second that gives us two second uh, animation all right so let's uh, start animating so I'm not even gonna use joints or anything let's just animate the box itself right so the first thing I would like to do is go press spacebar and go into my uh, side view or front view, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to click on my move tool, hold down the D key and the X key at the same time. I'm just going to drag my pivot point all the way to the bottom of my object. Now I'm going to press hover over the perspective view and press spacebar. So now I'm back in the perspective view, but my pivot is all the way in the bottom, right? And this is going to uh, help us in a second. All right, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press S key. And then when you press S, you see a red bar appears. That means the keyframe has been set. Also, make sure on the bottom right, your um, this button is pressed, which is auto keyframe toggle. So every time you make any changes in your scene, it will automatically set a keyframe. So this is great for animation. All right, so let's get this guy to jump up. So the first thing I'm going to do is maybe on keyframe five, he goes down with some anticipation, like he's powering up. So he's he's like this, and then he kind of powers up. And then on frame, frame eight, he begins to fly up. So I'm going to scale him back up to maybe a one. And you can see here in my um, channel box, I actually could see the value. So I could even actually set it to one manually and press enter. So again, he's normal. He went down, then he went back up. And now maybe he, our box, she might be a she, I don't know. But the box is stretching up because now it has some motion going up, right? So. And at this point, I would like it to fly up. So let's leave the ground. And I'm going to actually grab my move tool and just move it up. And then as it moves up, I want it to go back to one. Make it back one, move it up just a little bit because he actually gained some height here. And then maybe he paused in the air for a little bit. So maybe we'll let's give him a few keyframes. Um, and keep in mind, I'm kind of uh, timing it based on how it feels and how uh, just giving it a couple keyframes here and there. But at any point, if you wanted to change these around, all you have to do is hold down the shift key, click on any one of these keyframes. And in the middle, you have these two little uh, arrows and you can move them around. So if you are placing these and you're not happy with your timing, uh, feel free to move them around and adjust them, right? So let's play this over again. So he's sitting, he's normal, he's squishing. Now when he's squishing, the problem is he uh, also moves up. So if I hold on the X key, I can uh, snap him back to the grid. And let's see, then here I still want him on the ground. I'm gonna hold, hold on the X key again and snap him back onto the grid. I don't want him leaving the floor yet. Then he squishes up. And here I would like him to be just a little bit above the grid, but maybe not 
right on there. Then he flies up and then he's normal, right? Then as he becomes normal, he could be normal or he can even be a little squished if we wanted to. Maybe let's squish him just to create extra uh, fun animation. Okay, so he, he, he gets squishy. Then he kind of suspends in the air, so I'm gonna press S again. And then let's play the whole thing back uh, again. So now we could just copy these keyframes or we could just simply position them back, maybe scale them. So now he's like halfway here. As he's descending, he's stretching because the gravity kicks in and he's kind of a jelly box or she. It's a jelly box. So he's coming down and next our box is going to hit the floor, right? So when it hits the floor, let's just grab one of these keyframes. Um, it will probably hit the floor normal. So maybe something like this. And then it would be cool if the box squished down from the momentum of the um, of coming down. And then of course it's gonna go back up to normal. And to normal I'm gonna put it all the way back here and just see how the timing works. So now if we play our animation, let's see what we got. Very cool, right? So very simple. And as you can see, I didn't do anything systematic. I kind of felt my way around the animation. So I created more of an organic timing. So instead of saying, oh, you know, up on five, down on 10, like I didn't do that. I kind of just, not randomly, but I kind of spaced my animation as I thought it would feel good. So this is one uh, really important thing that I realized as I uh, started to animate is you have to do this a lot of times with different objects and shapes to get a really good timing for things. And once you, you are happy with your timing, using basic shapes, then it will help you tremendously when you get into more complex characters for like walk cycles or jumping. Uh, all of this is so important when it comes to timing to add, to create quality animations. So that's sort of the reason for this exercise. Uh, another thing I would like to do just to have a little more fun is maybe when he comes down, he squishes here. Let's try to also add some scale to him. Now to add the scale, I don't want him scaling up on Y. So I only want to scale him on Z and X. The, the, the height stays the same, right? So this way you can see he kind of squishes down. Then he begins to kind of, it's more jelly-like. Then he begins to become kind of skinny to normal. Then he flies up and you know, it'd be cool if he flies up again, so we don't mess with the height. Let's just squeeze him and make him kind of skinny. So he's kind of more like a jelly, jelly box. So he goes, he squishes down, he comes up, he gets skinny because he's flying up. And then he goes back to kind of square and then here maybe we can actually copy this keyframe and paste it here because this is the part where he's suspended in the air and I don't I don't really want him to be much different now when he's suspended in the air you see how my 17 and 22 they're exactly the same uh, then that could look weird if you're playing it at fast speed. So maybe we can move him just a little, just off. As you can see, there's a little life in there. And then he's kind of doing that. Then he begins to come back down. And then as he comes back down, let's do the same thing. We'll squish him without changing his height. And then he kind of hits the ground. And then maybe he splatters just a little more and there's no exact measurements I'm just kind of having fun and then he's going back to normal so let's see what we got press play so this box almost feels like it has life in it like you know you can add a couple 
you can add eyeballs to it and it will feel like a character, right? So that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to show you guys to um, do these kind of small exercises and um, just try to have fun.